Hi there everyone, it's Sarah here and I'm with you today for Indigo Blue and I have the tutorial that I promised so many of you um, for the the chocolate box project that I did. It was like a little pumpkin or an ornament bobble for a Christmas tree and this is going to be my step-by-step -step project for today. Um, what I'll try and do is I'll try and, I'll try and minimise this to as little time as possible so I'll try and kind of condense and speed up some parts of the process but first of all I'll just run through the products that you're going to need to be able to complete this project first of all you're going to need some um, I'm using some of the perfect stamping cardstock the white cardstock from Indigo Blue um, and what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be using the snowflake lace background stamp and I'm going to be stamping onto this to prepare it, and in advance of making the project. Um, you're also going to need some Mega Flake, your Scoochie Foam, your Fat Foam and of course Flitter Glue and you're going to need your spatula to get your glitter, your glue onto your um, Fat Foam. Um, the other pro products that you're going to need, you're going to need two long shanked brads if you can see these. Any old ones will do because you're not going to see the tops. Um, and the other thing that we're going to need is some form of hole puncher. I'm going to be using um, the crocodile. And the other thing that will come in handy is actually a fold back clip. I know loads of us will have these lying around so it's just an ordinary clip. Um, and also the way that I'm finishing mine off I'm using a uh, rosette die and I'm just going to run that through my cuckle bug um, but I hope to try and cut out as many you know all the non-essential parts of this as I can so let's get started okay so first of all many of you will be familiar with flutter glue and how to get it onto the fat foam um, what you want is about a teaspoonful and pop that onto your fat foam Clean off your nozzle onto the foam and then replace the cap on your bottle and put that to the side because we're done with that for now. Now what you want to do is, and I'll see if I can come in close with this one, you can see the flitter glue on the fat foam there just now. So what we're going to do is just work this in, into the fat foam. It just takes a matter of seconds. Um, it does go in quite well and you just keep working it in and working it around and you can see that's only been about what 10-15 seconds 20 at the most and all of your flitter glue is now absorbed into your fat foam now what you want to do is put this down onto a flat surface my tile still in my bag from the weekend because I was out doing a demo and it's not made its way back up to my shed yet so just put it down on a flat surface I'm putting it down on an acrylic block but just to be sure to clean it off once you've finished the block um, and I'll pop that there for now okay so what we're going to need to do is the size of paper that we need is a piece of paper 6 inches by 12 inches long now I'm just using the 8.5 by 11 standard size cardstock so I'm going to have to cut two sheets so here we have our snowflake lace stamp and it's a beautiful stamp and I use it a lot and it's perfect for this project. So what you want to do is take it off your um, laminated sheet and get a Slim Jim and place it on your Slim Jim. There we go. And it's a good idea to I think we're going to be okay with this. Um, just be careful that you don't get glue on your mat. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pop this here. Let's move this out of the way because I can't get moving. Okay, so what you want to do is take your stamp and give it a good gluing with your flat foam. You can see that when the glue goes on this stamp, 
it goes on white and when the glue is white it's wet which is good when it goes clear it's tacky um, but that's just what you need to watch out for straight down press and lift up again um, and then repeat the process that straight into a bucket of cold water and allow it and get it cleaned off um, and once I've done that I'll be straight back. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to leave our cardstock just put it to the side for five minutes until we do this next stage it will be fine as it is. Many of you will know that flusher glue will stay tacky for up to a couple of days so we're fine just to leave it to the side. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take um, remember the two pieces of offcuts from the cardstock. Well, these aren't going to go to waste. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of scratch cardstock, and this is one that I've used for. I've had glitter and stuff on it for pouring back into um, tubs. So what I'm going to do is pop that one there, and I'm going to take my uh, fat foam, and I'm going to swipe it over the surface of the cardstock. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to apply flake direct to the cardstock before we die cut it. Just be careful that you don't get glue all over your fingers or if you do give them a good clean afterwards. Okay so you can see that that's more or less all covered. It's that little spot there. So again I'm going to put this to the side for five minutes. Now, the flake that I'm going to be using today is Chocolate Box. It's beautiful. I love it and it's perfect for Christmas and it's perfect for this project. So what we're going to do is we are going to pop our first piece of cardstock into the flake. Now you don't need an awful lot. and just move that around and tap off the excess and I'm going to speed through this process and uh, I'll see you at the other side okay so what we've got now is we've got our 18 pieces of cardstock cut 6 inches by 5 eighths of an inch and what we want to do is put a hole through either end and I've gone ahead and done that just to speed things up a little bit um, and what I've also done is I've edged all the edges in Vintage Photo. Now there's a quick way and then there's the, the more um, laborious way. You can take your distress stain and while it's all together on the clip, run along the edges and it'll absorb in. Or what you can do is you can take your um, ink blending tool and just distress the edges. Um, you can do them individually or you can do them as a whole. Um, so what we want to do now is, now that our edges are inked and all our pieces of paper are together, we want to take one of the brads, the long shanked brads, and you want to feed that through um, one of the pieces of uh, Sorry, I'll start again. We, you want to feed that through each hole. Mine's it's just not wanting to go through. I think I've done... I did this in two batches and I think I put them in the ring the wrong way. This is this side. That's better because they're all together now. So you, what you want to do is you want to put the brad going through the wrong side. And then just split that over at the top. Like so. Then what you want to do is you want to space them all out going round in a circle. Now I'll speed this up. Because it's got mega flake on it, they tend to stick together a little bit, but it's not too bad. There we go. So you've got them all spread out going round in a circle and what you want to do 
is you want to turn it over so the wrong side is facing up the way and what you want to do is take the one that's on the very top the one that's next to the brad and its partner across on the other side so it's like east meets west so you want to pop your brad up the way so that the the brad head is underneath and if you like the two brad heads are facing each other so what you want to do is get north and south involved as well until you have an X shape I'm hoping I can show you this so you've got north, south, east and west um, now what you want to try and do is have about three or four in each section and what you want to do is clockwise pop them on to the brad and we just want to feed all these on and go around in a circle. Now you might find that you need to pop your finger in just to hold on to the brad because if you let it go then the whole lot's just going to ping all over the place so you want to try and keep a hold of them. There we go and we just want to pop all these on here and our very last one then what you want to do is just split the brad and that secures the top and then just kind of space them out a bit so that you've got a nice a nice shape and if I hold that up so you can see the snowflake lace pattern if my camera will focus there you go on the um, on the cardstock so what the, th the thing behind this is what you can do is you can either give it to someone as a gift you can open this up and stuff it full of nice sweets and treats at Christmas time these lend themselves for any time of the year in fact the idea that I got for this before was actually pumpkins for Halloween you could do them for Easter really any occasion you like so that's our basic pumpkin or gift box or bobble whatever you want to call it is ready now I've already gone ahead and I have you know how we had the strip of um, cardstock that we covered in Mega Flake I've run that through my die cutting machine where we have the rosette die and I've already gone ahead to save a little bit of time and made these up and I've edged them in vintage photo distress ink so you can see that you can get a really nice um, shiny Christmas bauble so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the bottom one and put a little bit of hot glue there and put the top one and sandwich it on okay then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and apply some hot glue to the base and then we're going to put this straight down on top of our chocolate box gift box I'm just going to push these together just to give it a little bit of a hold now the last finishing stage is I'm going to put a button on the top but what I'm going to do is I've just got a plain old button here and I'm going to put some mega flake on it now I'm just going to get an old um, mat here and what we're going to do is we're just going to dab our um, button with the um, the flitter glue on our sponge and then we're just going to wait for that to the glue to go from um, white to clear so that we can apply our mega flake so if you can just see that there you can see that the glue on the on the button
and it does tend to to go quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out some large flakes from my chocolate box and place them on the button. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I have taken a button and I've put some mega flake on it and glitter glue then mega flake so it gives you a nice shiny button. You can see that there. And then I'm just going to apply this directly to the top of our, our project here with some hot glue just to finish off the top of our and I'm hoping you can see this okay the top of our chocolate box Christmas ornament it's really pretty so there you have it it's not that hard to do um, it's just you don't have to make it with mega flake you can do stamping and just stamp direct um, but I think it looks quite special with some lovely chocolate box mega flake so I hope you enjoyed that step by step tutorial um, let me know how you get on with it and uh, I'd love to see your projects and of course I had to wait for the blooper at the end because I touched the hot glue through the buttonhole <laughs> so that'll be me until next Tuesday um, I'll see you next Tuesday on the blog with um, some more projects and uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all later bye for now